In this video, I'm gonna go over Boolean indexing in the context of uh, NumPy. So Boolean indexing is a technique for selecting elements of an array based on some Boolean mask. Now, this Boolean mask is just a binary array that has the same shape with the array we're trying to index, where each element uh, of this mask is either a true or false, okay? This depends on some condition, right? That satisfies, um, you know, that condition in our original array. So how does it work? So usually what we do, we just pass this Boolean mask, which contains, um, you know, either true or false uh, to our original array. And then the output, the resulting output is just a new array containing elements from our original array that corresponds to two elements from the Boolean mask. So we're gonna look at two examples. Let's begin by looking at the first example. So suppose we want to uh, create uh, names that corresponds to some row in a data array. So first, let's create an array of names, okay? So we create a list of names uh, using this numpy.array function. And we, you know, we save it uh, uh, as names uh, variable. Uh, so this names becomes our array. So let's run this. So uh, we've already created, uh, and, and we, when we run this, you can see now we've already created an array uh, that contains a list of names. Okay, and these names, you notice that it has duplicates. So we have Pete here, we have Ram here. Okay, so we're gonna see how this works. And then we create a data in an array. So uh, what happens here, we're gonna use the numpy.random.runn. Okay, so what this does, it just generates random numbers between zero and one, and then it takes two arguments, right? This argument, we, we can specify the shape, okay? of our random numbers, right? So click on that. Uh, and then we click on this, you can see uh, here, we're just saying we need to have uh, seven rows and four columns, okay? So we just specify that seven comma four, seven rows or seven observations and four columns, okay? Now, the first thing we might need to do here, so for example, we wanna compare names with a string. So we're gonna use this, uh, equal sign, just like in arithmetic operation, we can use this comparison operator, double equal sign, okay? Uh, just like uh, with arrays, you know, this can also be vectorized, right? So if we wanna compare the names, maybe let's say to this string P, right? So let's click on that and you can see it just returns an array that has true, false, false. So Essentially here, it'll just check, you know, where we have instances of P, right? Or return true, where uh, it's other, any other than P will return false, okay? Now, so the next thing we're gonna do here, we're gonna pass, um, so we're gonna pass now um, our condition here, names equals to P, and then we pass into our data. So, the thing here is that we, we, we just assume that in our data, each row corresponds to uh, each of our names here. So one thing you need to know is that it has to be have the same shape. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? We have seven rows. So suppose each row corresponds to a name here, okay? So when we pass this as indexing uh, to our data here, let's see what happens right, it will only return those that is true, right? You can see here we have Pete, that's the first row. You can see it just returns the first row. And then Pete also appears here at index zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, position four. So one, uh, so we have one, two, three, four, right? That's why we have this. So that returns an array with two rows, okay? Again, here we could say that also we want to return only the uh, the second column, right? And uh, we wanna return from the second column uh, to all the remaining columns, right? So we do that, uh, you can see, uh, so we just wanna create, so that'll be zero, one, two. So we'll return only this column, right? Remember, P corresponds to the first row, so we'll return that, and also we'll return this. Right, okay. 
So that's why we have that for that and this for that for the second column. And then the last column here will return this and also will return this. Uh, sorry, we'll return this negative eight four. Okay. Same thing with this. So you can try different numbers just to return. So this one just say return only the third column, you know, and then column, we don't specify anything and we just return up to, you know, if we had five, four, five, six incidentally, the third one is just the last one. So just return uh, this element and uh, just return this element as well. Okay. All right. So let's say we want to select everything but pit, right? So we use this exclamation mark, right? This is just to negate. So exclamation equals two. So we'll just return everything but pit. So again, you can see where we have pit, we'll return false and we'll return true for anything that is not pit. Okay. Remember, it just returns the true um, uh, elements. Okay. Alternatively, if we're going to pass this with our data array, uh, we use this sign here, right? This operator to negate the condition. This will just return the same thing. Uh, we'll return the, the numbers that correspond to only the rows that correspond to the names that are here. True, 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 true. So we're not going to return row number one and row number one, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, another thing you can also do is that, let's say, suppose you want to select two of three names, right? Uh, again, here we can combine this with multiple conditions. So here we have this operator, which just means R. We have this operator here on your keyboard, which just means and. In this example, we're going to use this. So we just want to return you know, names that correspond to pit or names that correspond to emit, right? And we call that our mask, right? Again, when we run that, it just kind of creates some filter, some condition here. Okay, so instances where we have pit, all that will turn true. Instances where we have emit, right? Remember, uh, again, um, we have duplicates right here and here. Okay, uh, that will return true. Okay, simple as that. Uh, again here, so we use now for our Boolean indexing now, we use a mask here and pass to our data. So we do that, we just returns only the rows that correspond to PIT and emit or emit. Okay. Uh, another thing we can also do here is, for example, if we want to set, um, you know, all the negative values to zero. Okay. So to do this, we can use this um, operator here. Right, so we can actually use, uh, we can say uh, from our data here, okay, we wanna pass a condition. So each time we find a data that's less than zero, meaning that all these negatives here, we wanna replace that with zero, right? Uh, alternatively here, we can also say, okay, we wanna set the whole row, okay, or columns, okay, with an ID 1D one, one Boolean array, right? So for example here, we just wanna say, okay, for all names that are not equals to RAM, right? Replace that with seven, okay? So we print that, you can see what happens, right? So only RAM, um, so only those names or rows that are not equals to RAM, okay, uh, are actually replaced with seven, okay? We can see if we go back here, we have how many? We have one, two, three, three rows that correspond to RAM. Um, and you can see that's what's preserved here. Okay, at the second, uh, the uh, the second position, um, at the sixth position, and the seventh position. Anything else is replaced with a seven. And here, so if we pass this, you can see. Um, so anything that was negative will be replaced by, uh, you know, a, a zero. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's what we have. Uh, so for a second example here. Uh, this is a fairly simple example. So the first thing we want to do here, we uh, import our library, uh, NumPy. Then we, we use this function here, uh, numpy.random.randint. Okay. So this is actually a NumPy function. It generates uh, random integers, right? And this random integers uh, within a specified range, right? Um, and you can see here it's between 1 and 10, right? Uh, excluding 11, right? And we're saying the size it takes an argument. So a size here equals to uh, 10, okay? Then we'll print our original array. 
Uh, the next thing we want to do here, again, we create a Boolean mask, right? Boolean mask that selects elements of the array that are greater than five. So this is a very useful tool. Um, again, simply, you know, it just returns a condition that contains only elements of the original array that satisfy this condition, right? Rather than using a loop, okay? So again, um, th this is very important, especially uh, in applications where you're doing a lot of filtering and aggregation, okay? Now, so to use Boolean indexing now, we pass this mask that we created here that has some condition, satisfies some condition in our original array, we pass it as an argument to our original array, okay? So this is exactly why we, we now actually call this Boolean indexing, right? And we, you know, it returns an output that has only or have elements of our original array that satisfy this condition, you know, anything that's greater than five, okay? So we run that and you can see here, our original array uh, was like this, right? We generated random numbers between one and 11. The size is 11, I mean, the size is 10. And then a Boolean mask, you know, anything greater than five, uh, that five returns true, 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 uh, false, true, false, true, true, and true. So every uh, number that satisfy that condition is returned at true. We pass it as a mask, and now it will kind of filter, right? And return only those that satisfy this Boolean uh, condition. Okay, which happens to be eight, 10, okay? Two is dropped out and uh, five is dropped out. The rest are actually returned. See, so um, in summary, basically you can see Boolean indexing is a very powerful tool in NumPy. It just allows you to easily uh, select elements of an array that specify a specific condition, right? You know, without really using loops, right? Uh, to check, you know, elements manually, all right? Uh, and we've already seen that some application we can use Boolean indexing is with filtering out values that don't meet a certain criteria, right? And also you can apply operations, okay, on certain elements, right? Or even subsets of an array, okay? All right, that's it uh, as far as Boolean indexing is concerned.